What's going on everybody, David here, back with another video. So we're gonna do a stimulus package, stimulus check update. We're gonna take a look at the stimulus check qualification. So the House Budget Committee, they presented their, their bill yesterday, uh, over 500 pages, and this will have everything in it. So the child tax credit, the enhanced unemployment, all of that will be in this. I wanna focus on the stimulus checks today and then we'll move forward in the coming days and we'll talk about some of the other things. Uh, but uh, this I, I found this pretty interesting and I'm gonna show it to you guys and then we're gonna talk about what I think might derail this whole thing. And so we'll talk about that at the very end. But first off, you guys can do me a favor, please hit the like button, it does help with the YouTube algorithm. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell notification, that way you'll get notified anytime we put out a video. Okay, so let's get right to it here. So I have my illustration for you guys. And what I've done is I've, I've broken this up into different sections. So we have individuals here, we have head of household here, we have the couples amount here, and then we have the dependents. And I, I split it up like this just to make it a little bit easier for you. So if you are an individual, you don't really, you're not really focused on some of the other stuff. So it'll allow you to focus on just one part and what the qualifications are for just that part. Okay, so let's talk about individuals first. So we have individuals here and $1,400 uh, for per individual. Now the cutoff here, 75,000 or less, you'll receive the full amount. It will phase out at 100,000. So if you make 100,000 or more, that's when it phases out, you'll, you'll go down to zero, you're not gonna make, you're not gonna receive anything when it comes to a stimulus check. You do need to have a social security number. So let's talk about taxes. So they're going off your 2019 or your 2020 taxes. So if you filed your 2020 taxes and they've received it and certified it, then you'll, they'll go off your 2020 taxes. Now, if you are on social security, SSI, SSDI, VA, railroad retirement, they will send it to you the same way that they sent the other checks to you. So you don't have to file your taxes in order to receive uh, this next stimulus check. All right, let's move forward here now, head of household. So if you're head of household, it's 112,500 or less, you receive that full amount. It will phase out at 150,000. You must have a social security number. And then the same thing applies when it comes to your, your filing your taxes. Okay, let's move to, to couples, $2,800 per couple. 150,000 or less, you receive the full amount. It will phase out at 200,000. Now, at least one individual, so if a couple, at least one of you has to have a social security number. If you do have a social security number, you will receive the 1,400. However, your spouse, if they do not have a social security number, they will not receive 1,400. But the reason that they're, 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 they put this language in here is because with the CARES Act, if you were married to someone who did not have a social security, so if you had a social security number, you were married to someone who did not have a social security number, guess what? You both didn't get stimulus checks. So that's why they changed the language here. So now if you are married to someone who does not have a social security number, you will still receive your $1,400 stimulus check. And then the same thing applies when it comes to your taxes. All right, let's go forward to the dependents, okay? Now this is this is the question I get asked the most about dependents, so we're gonna go over this. $1,400 per dependent, any age, okay? So adults, children, everyone will receive that $1,400. Now, it's important to note, and I'll, I'm, I'm gonna move down here first. Checks will go to the person who claimed you as a dependent. So it's not gonna go to the person who's the dependent, it's gonna go to the person who claimed you. So if I file my taxes and I, I file, um, and I claim five people as dependents, those checks are coming to me, okay? So I, I've had people ask me that, say, well, I'm a dependent, do I get the checks sent to me? No, it's gonna be sent to the person who claimed you as a dependent. Okay, so you must be claimed as a dependent, that's number one. So someone on their taxes has to say, yes, I'm claiming this person as a dependent. There's no limit. So if someone claims 10 people as dependents on their taxes, well, they, they're looking at $1,400 for each individual. And then you must have a social security number. Okay, so that is the, the theme of everything that we're looking at right now. You need to have a social security number. You had some politicians that were really against giving stimulus checks to people with ITIN numbers or people who do not have social security numbers. And so they made sure to put that in there 
uh, so people know politicians know okay look you do need to have a social security number in order to receive a stimulus check now i want to talk about what could derail this whole thing so we've been talking about this 15 dollars an hour minimum wage the 15 dollars an hour minimum wage guess what it's in the bill so that means that the house will vote on this by the end of this week they're going to vote on this and if they approve it then it's going to go to the senate now we know senator cinema she's a democrat she does not want this 15 dollars an hour minimum wage in this bill she doesn't think it's appropriate so because of that this bill might not go anywhere because you need all 50 democrats to vote for this and then kamala harris vice president to come in and break the tie and then they can do budget reconciliation if you do not get the 50 Democratic senators to vote for this, it's not gonna go anywhere. And so there's gonna have to be some changes made if Senator Sinema is, is stuck on not going for this $15 an hour minimum wage. As of right now, it looks like she has not changed her position. So something has to be changed. Now the problem with changing things is it takes time. So if the House goes ahead and votes on this, approves it, sends it over to the Senate, the Senate has to make the changes and then approve it and then send it back to the house for final approval and then the house sends it to the president so he can sign off on it. This all needs to be done by March 14th. That is the cutoff. That's the cutoff that they're giving themselves or the deadline that they're giving themselves, March 14th. So it's gonna be interesting to see how these politicians handle this. Are they gonna go ahead and put this $15 an hour minimum wage in there? Are they gonna take it out last minute? We're gonna to have to follow it to see what happens but make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you'll know, hit the little bell notification as well. That way you'll know what's going on because I will give you updates as to how this progresses. Uh, but right now, that is the only thing that, that, that people are looking at right now and saying, well, I don't know, $15 an hour minimum wage. We know how some politicians feel about this. If you're gonna put it in there, the Senate might not approve it. And so, now that's where we are. I want to know what you guys think about this whole thing. So in the comment section, let me know down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.